We recently spent two weeks on board the Carnival Celebration and had the chance to visit every dining venue they have to offer. So today, we are ranking 23, that's right, 23 dining options available on board this ginormous ship. Well, with the exception of Chef's Table, which is more of a tour slash presentation, room service because we don't stay in our room, plus the menu comes from different venues we're going to review anyway, and tea time because let's be honest, you didn't click on this video for a tea time review. We're starting out with number 18 and counting down to number 1 before reviewing the 5 worst dining options. Number 18 is a sea day brunch located in the main dining room. The sea day brunch was good. The skillet cakes, aka pancakes, were soft, airy, and sweet. And my huevos rancheros had a perfect fried egg over a meaty tortilla, but my pepper shaker was empty. Number 17, Swirls. Yeah, it's not so much a restaurant venue, but it's listed that way on Carnival's website, so we had to throw it in, especially for how popular it is. Free ice cream! Number 16 is Street Eats, a food truck style venue featuring Time Fries, Steam Dream, and Mad Sizzle. And if you like chicken wings, this is where you'll find them for an upcharge. Every day features different items at each station. Not all of them are bangers, but they are definitely worth the visit. On this day, the beef bow from Steam Dream was our favorite. Plus, we had some buffalo wings. Not too spicy, but still a good kick. At number 15 we have Rudy's Sea Grill. This was our first time at this restaurant and we were really excited. You start with some bread and butter and a single bite appetizer. For starters we had the wild caught tuna, seafood bisque, lobster mac and cheese, and the scallops covered in a cheese sauce. They were all really good but it was the mains that didn't rank Rudy's higher on the list. I had the crab stuffed lobster and Mike had the crab cake, which looks smaller than our appetizers. The crab stuffed lobster was good, but not as good as an actual lobster tail. The crab cake was okay, but you guys have to see Josh's fisherman stew. <laughs> Josh may be regretting this fisherman stew here. <laughs> Number 14 is Cucina del Capitano, Carnival's Italian restaurant. Now a free option for your first reserve visit and only $8 for any extra visits. The portions have been reduced since turning complimentary, but you don't have to worry, you'll still have plenty of Italian goodness to eat between appetizers, mains, and desserts. And for the first time ever, we visited Cucina for lunch. They give you a paper menu to pencil in your selections. Pro tip, don't just tell them what you want. I did this and they made me fill out the menu anyway. But the food was just as good as dinner. Worth the visit. Lucky number 13, Guy's Pig and Anchor. For this one, we're including the buffet available on embarkation day and sea days, as well as dinner service. Now, we're from California, so you can say we don't know what good barbecue is, like let's say from the Carolinas, especially Texas, but we think I did a solid job on these smoked meats. Yep, the brisket is smoked with hickory for 18 hours in two large smokers. How do we know this? We learned it in the Pitmaster class through Carnival Kitchen. So we are officially barbecue experts now. For dinner, you get table side service. And just like Cucina's lunch menu, you get a paper menu to mark your selections. Most of the menu is complimentary with the exception of the St. Louis ribs and the prime rib. We shared the pig and anchor melt. This sandwich was so good and the first one in the countdown worthy of a hashtag big bite.
Number 12 is Bonsai Sushi, and as Betsy mentioned before, we are Californians, and we Californians love sushi. We always start with edamame, and then go crazy on sushi rolls. We would really like to rank Bonsai higher, but there are only four rolls to choose from. California, Spicy Tuna, Bang Bang, and Tempura Rolls. Despite the limited selection, the sushi was amazing. Definitely worthy of the next hashtag Big Bite. One item you don't want to skip is the noodle bowls. If you love ramen, you will love these bowls. And if you love Japanese food like we do, you won't be able to move afterwards. Number 11, Fresh Creations, available in the Serenity area. This is where you can concoct your own custom salad in a huge bowl. Feeling healthy? Start with your choice of lettuce or a mixture of the two. Then add all your favorite veggies as you make your way down the line. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. This is just a salad bar. Well, let me tell you, the regular salad bar doesn't have this selection of beans, quinoa, cheeses, more cheeses, chicken, 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 let's get the rest of the chicken. Yep, we're adding it all. Ham, 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 ham. Dried cranberries, more cheeses, pepitas, sliced almonds, and because this is a diet food, we can pile on lots of croutons, extra dressing, salt, pepper, olive oil, because you gotta have those healthy fats. And voila, a 1500 calorie salad worthy of a hashtag big bite. We've reached the top 10 and Deco Deli is the next on our list, featuring classics from the deli on older carnival ships like the turkey, the Reuben, and the meatball sandwiches, plus a new Cuban inspired Deco side of the menu with some must tries like the Cubano, the Bocadillo, and the Americano sandwiches. In this clip, we went with some classic favorites. I had the turkey because I love a toasted pretzel bun. Yep, that's the ticket. And I had the tuna sandwich, which comes served cold, but they changed it up for me and made it hot and toasted. So much better that way. Number nine is right next door, Miami Slice. Just like Pizzeria Del Capitano and Pizza Pirate, this is where you'll find freshly made hand-tossed pizzas. And just like Deco Deli, Miami Slice features two new Cuban-inspired pizzas, La Habana, with ham, chorizo, gouda, manchego, and mozzarella cheese, and the Picadillo, topped with beef, sazon, gouda, and mozzarella. But don't you worry, if you have a late night hankering for some pizzas, this is where they'll be pumping out tons of pepperoni slices at 4 a.m. for all you drunk cruisers, kind of like these beaches right here. Abandoned pizza ever again. Do you remember that one time we found that 200 dollars pizza? Oh my god. Nancy has brought us all these pizzas. Hey, all the pizzas. This is pizza time. Late night pizza. Here we go. Look at all the pizza. That pizza, that pizza, that pizza. Every pizza. We got cheese slices. We got pepperoni slices. We got pepperoni slices. And we got abandoned pizzas. We did not just get an abandoned pizza from the side of the beverage. It was hot and it looked like untouched, so maybe we did. We need pizza. it. We need it. There it is. What abandoned pizza. None of it will go to waste. <laughs> Number eight is one of our go-to spots on cruise day, Blue Iguana. One side is tacos, the other side is burritos. But our favorite side is the tacos. The tortillas are made from fresh dough just moments before they are filled. Choose between pork, chicken, or fried fish. Or just get them all like I do. And don't forget to load up with toppings from the salsa bar before commencing your hashtag big bite. For breakfast, I like the huevos rancheros. Nothing like a fried egg over a taco with chickens, beans, cheese, topped with some salsa verde. The repas are good too. It's basically cheesy cornbread shaped like a quesadilla. 
For me, I've been visiting the burrito side for breakfast. I like to add just about everything. Ham, eggs, potatoes, onion, pico, cheese, guac, sour cream, and beans from the taco side. And with a burrito stuffed with that many toppings, you know what that means. Yep, hashtag big bite. Okay, maybe two big bites. At number seven is Emerald's Bistro, 1397. This is another first time for us and we couldn't be more excited. We love seafood and naturally by its placement on the list, we like it much better than Rudy's. Here, you simply order at the counter, then choose a table. We ordered a bunch of items to all share. Out first was the shrimp scampi, fried oysters, and shrimp po' boy. So we started with the fried oysters and passed them around. We all ate one except Michelle. Don't worry, Michelle, we have something else on the way for you. The shrimp scampi was one of our favorites, super buttery and flavorful. Next, we tried the jambalaya, which had the perfect amount of spice, and the shrimp po' boy was highly approved as well. Now, for the shucked raw oysters. We shouldn't have skipped the fried version, Michelle. For dessert, we shared the beignets. Now they were no Café du Monde beignets from New Orleans, but they were pretty dang good. In fact, we went back to Emeralds on other nights just for the beignets. Oh, and we can't forget the hashtag Big Bite. At number six, we are giving out the Hidden Gem Award for the Java Blue Cafe. Now most of us think of Java Blue as your go-to coffee shop or booze coffee. But once you get your cup of joe, walk on over to the other side where not too many people know about the included sandwiches, wraps, and calzones available to order. Or for an upcharge, you can order an assortment of cakes, big cookies, or donuts. We ordered a baked pepperoni calzone and a toasted turkey sandwich. The calzone tasted just like a Miami sliced pepperoni pizza folded over on itself. And the turkey sandwich was extra hot, which made it so good. Our only complaint was that we didn't discover it sooner. The quality was about the same as Deco Deli, but we ranked it higher because of how unknown it is, making it easy to order. Plus, since it's right next to Golden Jubilee, we found ourselves going back again and again while chilling at the bar. Oh, and you gotta try the roast beef sandwich. Hashtag drunk big bites. Well guys, we have just the top five and the bottom five left on the list. And just to recap, we genuinely liked everything on the list so far, but it's only the five worst venues that we had issues with. But before we go there, let's review our top five. Number five, Shaq's Big Chicken. We absolutely love fast food, and Shaq's is the perfect fried chicken fast food for a ship. At the front of the line, simply order one of the four sandwiches or chicken strips. You'll get a side of the crispiest thin steak fries to go with your chicken, which you can then take over to the side station for sauce, pickles, slaw, or potato salad. Whether you get the sandwich or the strips, the chicken is always moist and the breading is full of flavor. Our favorite has always been the Uncle Jerome's, which is a Nashville hot sandwich. Food hack, on this day I ordered the sandwich with just ranch and lettuce, then added buffalo sauce from the side station to make it a buffalo chicken sandwich. Number four, Guy's Burger. Delicious smash style burgers made with 80-20 beef and super melty cheese on a brioche bun. You can order one of Guy's signature burgers with chili, onion rings, a pig patty, or you can get the plain Jane and top it with these topping bar suggestions. For us, we like to order our burgers plain, and if I'm feeling extra hungry, I'll get a double patty, then load it up with our own custom toppings from the toppings bar. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. If you've seen our videos before, you've seen us grab a toasted pretzel bun from the deli and build a guy's burger on that. Yes, it is the ultimate cruise food hack, but on the celebration, the Deco Deli is located on deck eight and guy's burgers on deck 17. On other ships, the deli and guys are pretty close to each other. 
Number three, Seafood Shack. Yes, the little corner spot on the Lido has better seafood than Rudy's and Emerald's. Seafood Shack is your fisherman's port style seafood, making your food fresh to order. If it's busy, it might take some time, but it's totally worth it. Today we ordered the lobster rolls, buffalo shrimp, and shrimp by the pound. We tried to order a half pound, but the minimum is one, so that's what we got. It's a little bit of work to eat, but they are so good. The buffalo shrimp are better though. The sauce is good while not too spicy and the tempura style batter is what make it super delicious. Now onto the lobster rolls filled with super soft buttery lobster on a toasted buttery bread. Worthy of a hashtag big bite. Definitely worth a hashtag big bite. You know what? Make that a double big bite. Sorry guys, uncontrollable happy food dance coming. Number two, Bonsai Tempanyaki. Today our friends Sarah and Johnny B are joining us for what's been one of our favorite dining experiences over the last few years. As the chef prepares everyone's order, your server periodically brings out the menu's appetizers. Out first was the spicy tuna on the rocks, which was so soft and delicious. Next was the pork belly, which was also really good. Then we had miso soup and kabuki salad while our chef hyped us up before firing up the grill. The first item he cooked was the fried rice before starting the shrimp, salmon, and mixed veggies. By the way, most of the food is cooked in heaping amounts of garlic butter, including the rice and shrimp. Time to grill some filet mignon. This is some of the best steak you will ever eat. You wouldn't think so, being cooked on a huge flat grill, but holy filet of cow is that good, right Sarah? And don't forget about the lobster. Should we remind you about the garlic butter technique? Well, just in case you forgot, it makes everything good. Topping our list is Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. We were joined by the Olivers, the Carriers, and the Gomrys. Tonight we did steak right and brought a series of wines to pair with each part of our meal. Thank you, Rolliver, for the very nice wines. First was a very nice Dom Perignon champagne, which I think made our server a little nervous to open. This was a dinner we planned well in advance and we could not wait to attend. So, cheers to us in this amazing time together. While sipping on our champagne, we started with breadsticks, butter, and the classic single bite appetizer. Following that, our appetizers of mushrooms, shrimp cocktail, and Caesar salad came out. It was time for our white Bordeaux, a Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc blend. The appetizers were amazing, and if you're wondering why Mike is so excited for a Caesar salad, well, it's because he likes to add anchovy to it. Our mains were both the surf and turf, with the filet cooked to a perfect medium rare. My sides were fresh mushrooms and mashed potatoes, and Betsy got broccoli only because I didn't realize I could order two sides, Mike. Anyways, our lobster and fillets were cooked perfectly. We had an Anderson Valley Pinot Noir and Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon to go with our surf and turf. For dessert, I had the butter pecan ice cream paired with port wine. And I went with my favorite, the cheesecake. Mmm, so good. Coming up next, the five worst restaurants we ate at. Coming in at number five on the top five worst places to eat is Chebang. This was our first and probably last experience eating at the Chinese Mexican Fusion restaurant. We ordered from both sides of the menu and first to come out were the tacos. Mike had the steak and I had the pork. We wish they would have come put together because they would have held their temperature better. But we love ourselves some tacos, so here we go.
Now don't get us wrong, the tacos were good, but they just didn't taste like Mexican food. Now check this out, these aren't nachos. These aren't even loaded nachos, no. These are super loaded nachos. They don't look loaded to me. Let's move on to the Chinese food. For apps, the pot stickers and spring rolls were good. But the real winner was the chicken lettuce wraps, worthy of a hashtag big bite. The Chinese food entrees were the best part of Chibay. The Kung Pao chicken, broccoli beef, and hakka noodles were good, but not as good as Gigi's Asian kitchen on the Vista class ships. Now let's go back to the Mexican. This is the pork lomito and eight hours slow cooked roast pork. And since we know how much Mike Lovelace loves a crock pot meal, we gave him some. It had good flavor, but just like the tacos, it didn't taste Mexican. The side of beans were probably the most off-putting. And when it came to my chewy steak ranchero, all I could think about was all the visits to Mexico where we had the most amazing food. Whether from a restaurant, taco shop, or a food cart, we had just about every taco you can imagine. Even the spicy ones were delicious. Plus, as we mentioned before, we're from Southern California. And if the menu pictures don't look like these, they probably suck. Hell, serve me enchiladas in a styrofoam container over this. Anyway, sorry about the rant. Here's a hashtag big bite of broccoli beef for the inventor of the big bite, Mike Lovelace himself. The fourth worst place to eat on our list is the main dining room. There are some good things to eat here, but more often than not, your steaks or chicken might come out tough or dry. If the staff is overworked, the entrees can take upwards to over an hour to come out. Betsy had the fried green tomato, which was good, and I ordered my favorite, the frog legs. Tastes like chicken. Here's my salad with no toppings except one tomato, followed up by my dry penne pasta where I added leftover bread butter to flavor it up. And as if I hadn't learned my lesson at Chibang, I ordered the enchiladas. What the f is that? Is that supposed to be green enchilada sauce? On a positive note, you can purchase souvenir shot glasses from a bartender that walks through the dining room. In this case, we had buttery nipple shots to save our palates. We do love the entertainment put on by the dining staff. During the cruise, it is upbeat and festive, but tonight, it's the last night, so they're going to sing us the farewell song before dessert is served. I tear up every time. For the We love the chocolate melting cake, but on this cruise, they were more often undercooked or overcooked. So we ordered the baked Alaska, which is so good. The third worst place is the Lido Market Buffet. You might be thinking, crap, the MDR, now this? Come with us on this journey through a culinary nightmare as we take some overcooked noodles, a dry salmon brick, a spring roll, green beans, whatever that is, Oh, and did somebody say dry pork? Sure. During the day, in this section, you'll find sea dogs, gelato, and shawarma, which brings it up a couple notches. But tonight, we're just gonna browse the desserts. I think I'll have the Mississippi mud pie. I can at least rehydrate it with some chocolate sauce. And there it is, guys, the dinner of champions right there. Maybe it was just an off day, so we're giving it another chance. On this trip, the food was a little fresher. The mashed potatoes were the best, but overall, still nowhere as good as the surrounding food venues. If you're really looking forward to Lido Market Buffet, do yourself a favor and visit Sea Dogs, Gelato, or our favorite, Shawarma. Before this cruise, we had no idea what Shawarma was. Turns out it's like a sandwich and it's really good. If we were to single out shawarma as a food venue on its own, it would rank among the top 10, right next to Deco Deli. Ah, Green Eggs and Ham comes in at number two in the worst places to eat. Mike, this should be number one. Well, let's just let the beaches see for themselves. Do they serve mimosas bottomless at this? I'm mad at you. 
We just got our picture taken. Thing one. Dreams are coming true. Every child that's dreams are coming true today. They're getting to meet thing one and take a photo. Hear all those children sounds around us. <laughs> Another dream coming true over there. Right behind you, Kate. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose and shoulders, knees and toes and toes. See, see, you are getting into it. No, I'm not. Thing one and thing two, everyone wants to take a nap. Everybody say bye, thing one. Bye, thing two. Bye, thing two. Have a good nap. I'm coming back. I ordered the signature green eggs and ham, served on an English muffin with hash browns and bacon. Despite the unappealing color and, uh, well that piece looks like a turd, it tastes just like delicious scrambled eggs. Despite it being 7 in the morning, I was loving it. Maybe we should re-rank this higher- No Mike, my plate was awful. It looks cool. This is the Truffala Tree Pancakes, and because of their shape, they were cold. Pancakes need to be shaped like blankets to retain their heat. Now, not only am I surrounded by screaming kids and kids' music, I have cold food, it's 7 in the morning, and there are no mimosas. Sing along if you know it, babe. It's really weird there's no champagne in this. Next verse is you. Now the only way out of the restaurant is to take a picture right with here. Sam I am. <laughs> there he is. Room number? Uh, 15391. Alright. Sam I am. Wait, you're gonna go? You're gonna go by No, you're gonna come. Come on. Alright. And topping the list of the worst places to eat is the Midnight Buffet. Located within Guy's Brewhouse Smokehouse, this is all the sh** from the day that's going to expire soon, and they're giving us one last chance to grab it. The pizza doesn't look like Miami Slice pizza, and that's because it's not. It's from the Lido Marketplace Buffet. Those sandwiches look like they were made this morning, so no thanks. This buffalo chicken popcorn looks like the rejected pieces at the bottom of Shaq's Big Chicken Supply. So I'll take one of those. Reheated fries? Sure. Leftover sea dogs, leftover guys, burger chili, nah. More leftover guys and shacks, but I'll go with the leftover cookies from the buffet. Well, that's it, Beaches. Have you been on Carnival Celebration? Let us know what your top restaurants are. Is our list completely wrong? Tell us in the comments below. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.